So in this scenario, let's say I come to you and ask you to help me deploy some applications to my Windows users. In total, we have about 100 machines that we want to install to. Half are going to get one application, and the other half is going to get another. What are some ways that we can accomplish this? First, I would like to know if these machines are managed by Active Directory. Uh, yeah, let's say that we have one Active Directory domain. Uh, and before we go into deploying the software, tell me a little bit about what Active Directory is and why it's helpful in this kind of environment. Active Directory organizes users, groups, and computer permissions to restrict certain resources in the enterprise environment. It's also used to deploy software, and it's also used to control the environment. OK, so we already have Active Directory set up. Um, how can we utilize it to deploy our software? Since we're deploying this file to a lot of users, we want to test it out first. So I want to know if this is an MSI file. Um, yeah, it is an MSI file. And yes, I agree. We should test it out. So talk to me about how you do your testing. OK, so we want to replicate the application for both sets of users. Do you know if these users are in different OUs? Uh, yeah, let's say that we have a sales and engineering OU, and we want to target each with their own application. So we want to create test accounts and then add those test accounts to those specific OUs, or we can have pilot users. Another way to fully test this process is by creating a group for the pilot users, and then we can create a new group policy that will allow the application to be installed once the computer boots up. OK, and where would we store the MSI file? We could store the file on a shared network drive if we have one. And if we don't, we can always create one. OK, great. So let's say that we, we do all this, and now our packages have both been tested. We know they're working well. Now what? So we want to send out communications to the target users. And then we also want to do this during off hours so it would not be disruptive. And then we also want to give the users our support contact, just so if something does arise, they'll be able to contact someone and get help immediately. OK, great. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good plan. In this scenario, we saw some of the interviewing skills that we've called out before, like asking follow-up questions and defining terms when you mention them. We also saw how answering technical questions is not always about technical issues. We also need to take into account the human component, like putting a communications plan in place. Congratulations on finishing this lesson from the Google IT Support Certificate. Access the full experience, including job search help, and get the official certificate by clicking the icon or the link in the description. Watch the next lesson in the course by clicking here. And subscribe to our channel for more lessons from upcoming Google Career Certificates.